I want you proving yourself. Listen, if someone wants to hire or bring Avalon along for Atlantic Crossing, <laughs> would you be up for it? I can fix impellers. There you go. So far. <laughs> Making the transition from a land life to a sailing life is not something that happens overnight. All right, so we're gonna do just a couple liters. I have not pumped gas since the RV will. I remembered how to do it. It's like riding a bike. In fact, if you ask some seasoned cruisers, they will say that the transition is something that is never fully achieved. Largo, Largo, you can't use that much water to wash the dishes. Largo, Largo, that's not, you don't need that much water. Says who? As new cruisers, there is a ton to wrap our arms around. From the fact that your house is constantly moving. Okay, I want you to put these on. I know it's weird to be sitting in here doing school, but it is only our third sale, and just in case we need you to come out and help us. To the fact that something can break at any moment. Good, Largo. Keep going. And then there are no repair people ready at a moment's notice to solve your problem when you're miles offshore. Margo, if other people want to hire you to do a job, are you up for it? Uh, yeah, $5, an hour. $20 an hour. Okay. But there are certain key points in your cruising life that you can point to that are key confidence building moments. The type of moments that when things go right, you know that from that moment forward, you are capable of things you never thought possible. I know we're early in on the boat game, but any regrets, Will? They say that when you when you actually go in here and you see water in the bilge, that you should go ahead and taste it to see if it's fresh Ugh. or salty. I think I'm gonna pass this time. In this episode, we will show you what such a moment looks and feels like when things go the way that a seasoned pro would do it. All right, so now we've got the other pipe out. Um, it could be the impeller, I don't know. Thank you so much to our patrons whose support make these episodes possible. Goodbye, Ibiza town. Now, I cannot tell you how happy I am to leave this anchorage. Just about as happy as I was after lockdown in Port Camargue in France for like seven months. It's beautiful here and the town is really lovely, but there's a bazillion ferries going through constantly and all night we're rocking with the current and woo, we're free. Are you ready, Will? First fair of the day showing up right now. Is it? Yeah. Oh boy, here it comes. Now just in time. You look like Zeus. Is it <laughs> Zeus with his thing, right? I'm like Poseidon. Poseidon, Poseidon. <laughs> now, our journey started with a brief stop at a beautiful and open anchorage on the north side of Ibiza, where we had peace and tranquility. Can't do my work if you keep playing with me, cat. Just get tired, sleep. That's what cats do. But then Largo decided that he would get a hold of the camera and take charge. Well, let's just say that we love his energy and ambition. This is B-roll. But once we felt ready to leave, that's where the fun began. And we entered a new aspect of cruising for the first time, engine issues underway. We just had another first happen. I'm remaining relatively calm. Our port engine overheat light went on and then a big beep, 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 beep. I was at the helm. We were on um, we were on autopilot and I had my book on tape on and I was like, what is that? Because there's all kinds of different sounds on the boat. Like things just start making sounds and you're like, Which, what did that sound do? What did that mean? Um, basically, Avalon went over the side here to make sure it was still pumping out water. It was not. Um, the automatic fire extinguisher did not go off, which means there was not a fire happening in there. The engine is underneath our bed, so we had to pull the mattress off and everything. But right now, from what I understand, is something came through the pipes and got stuck in the pipes before it hit the weed strainer or vice versa or something like that. So take it down, Lars. All right, Dad, what happened? All right, so the weed strainer um, didn't, well, we've been over a lot of weeds over the last couple of weeks, and so I think that the weed strain is doing its job, but it has to be cleared out. When when the alarm came off, I remember quite clearly that Brad, our instructor, said that if there's ever an issue with overheating, the first thing you check is the weed strainer. Um, and so I've been, you know, we turned it off, and it, there's there's a clear like bound up, bind up there. Um, it's it's going all the way through from the outtake from the weed strainer through the impeller and then almost to the siphon valve the anti-siphon valve and so 
we're now it did, didn't go past the anti-siphon valve which is really good so we're just gonna now clear the pipes all the way through try test it out once see if it works okay if, the, if it works out okay then we don't have to change the impeller which is fantastic if we have to change the impeller then not so fantastic <laughs> we do have spares yeah. we do have spares yeah okay can i yeah. start so Whatever. avalon is in charge now for undo undoing all Hurry! the valves not the valves <laughs> that would be undo bad the screws. but undoing all the pipes and Largo's in charge of making, making a mess. Making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a bucket. Whoa, careful, mister. This is what we're calling emergency DIY repair on the go. Okay. Imagine if we're on a crossing. This would be all oh. the drama. No, oh my god. This would gosh. be so exciting because we did nothing better to do. We'd be like, yeah, something broke, we can fix it. While mom and Largo were at the helm, dad and I were getting onto the job of fixing the engine. All right, so. Oh my foot! All right, let's do that again. All right, so Dad, 20 minutes in, what's the conundrum? We've, I don't know. Uh, we've cleared out the weed strainer. We've concluded that these things are not very clogged. Um, so I'm gonna reconnect everything and stir it up and see what happens. If it's not um, this, maybe it's it's the impeller that we have to ch change out. But it's a new impeller. But these things, I guess, you know, like anything else in the boat, they all go as fast as you you don't want them to. But we're gonna try this out. Now we're gonna test the port engine. Are you ready, Will? Yeah, go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's take it. Stop! 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 Pull it! Pull it! Pull it! Okay, so what I think the issue is is right now is that I'm guessing that there may be a blockage at the seacock. I'm hoping because nothing's coming through. We still have one engine that works fine, so we're gonna go ahead and move forward to our anchorage for the night over what's like two miles away, so we should be okay. And then once we get down there, um, we'll be able to dive the motor, dive down, down, and check out the motor and all that fun stuff. So I have actually been wanting to test out what it's like to hell with one engine <laughs> just in case you, that happens you, you're definitely getting your wish i mean i guess you can never this can never happen at anchor so this is what it happens when you're out here we took the rest of the afternoon getting to our anchorage on one engine where friends were eagerly waiting our arrival so this is a look of a man who is getting us into anchorage with one engine in an anchorage that's really tight and i think we're getting the last spot here you can I've, do it bud I'd rather do this than, than trying to get it into a marina with oh one God. engine. I know, right? This isn't so bad. Have you had engine failure yet? No. Well, <laughs> in the marina, but not sailing. Oh my God. It wasn't crazy scary, but it was a little scary, right? Yeah. And Those are friends of ours that are in this anchorage as well, and they just came over to help us. So they're going to go get their snorkel and mask and they're gonna dive for us because it's such a tight space that we need to make sure we're actually secure down here and we're kind of flying blind because there's not a lot of room to navigate. They're looking for sand in the ocean. Why do we need sand? Because it is illegal to park on grass. All right, so we gotta find some sand. So we gotta find some sand. <laughs> Never a dull moment, huh, Will? Oh, that's a good time. We wanted to test out this one engine thing. As much as it looked like we were surrounded by sand underneath us, where we needed to drop to allow for a safe swing radius was surrounded by seagrass, with small patches of sand here and there. He's gonna spot us on where to drop. And so, uh, cause right now we're on really heavy weeds, which is not a good idea. Hey, Largo in Avalon, go gentle on the, right, on the windlass because we don't have the engine supporting it for the voltage. Are you ready for a windy night, Largo? Yeah, I hope it isn't windy. I hope it isn't windy. It's really windy tonight. 40 knots. I need to back up. Okay. Now the other issue we had was that the engine down also had the alternator which charges the house batteries which is needed to support the power requirements of the windlass. So lowering and raising the anchor with just the house batteries and the solar that's supporting it was a bit of a concern. It's a bit of a long story as to why the setup is the way it is but we plan on remedying it the moment we hit our haul-out location in Lagos in less than a month. In the meantime, we were just grateful that we had someone helping us hit the right spot. I, I know, I know. Alec, you might have a career in this. Tiny bit that way, tiny bit yeah, that right? way. Get ready. Get We're ready. almost there? Get ready, Largo. Keep going. We're almost there, Dad. Keep going. Drop it. 
Or no? Yeah, drop it. Drop it, Largo. Alex, just drop it. Okay, bridle out and we'll test it again. It takes a village, guys! Or just two boats. <laughs> or just two boats. <laughs> okay, so now we got a firm grasp on onto this, the sandy ground. It's not very sandy, but we found a sandy patch that we dug into and we're good. Um, it is now time to go in there and check out the, the through hole. See what's, let's see what's causing it not to register water coming in. Let's jump in the water now. Boat engines are water cooled, which means they suck in ocean water, which is then taken to the heat exchanger. The cool seawater keeps the antifreeze at a normal temperature and then the engine runs perfectly. It sounds complicated, but it's really quite simple. On our boat, the salt water intake occurs at the sail drive, which is basically at the propeller unit. In this case, there was no visible damage, so the next step was to resolve the issue and inspect the impeller related to the salt water intake pump. What are you doing, hon? We're watching a video about <laughs> um, like four months ago when we were with Brad and we were learning how to do our first engine check and changing the impeller is part of what we did. So I want to refresh my memory on what we did and how See, we did See, there is it. a lot of value in you overshooting. There's a, there's a lot of value in having like about 30 terabytes of data within the boat. <laughs> Look at that. You organized it so well. You just went to engine impeller and there it was. No, I went to the episode and I went oh. there and I found it. Oh, right it's there. in the episode. Yeah. You didn't go I, my footage. filing system is basically by event. not. That'd be so good if I can categorize by part of the boat, by person, and part of the boat, and everything else. Do I just pull it out? Uh, yeah, you just gotta be careful because just the plastic piece. Well, the whole thing comes out. Look, the metal one. too. This is what you're replacing. Where's the other one? So it was back to the grind for Dad and I as we went back to the engine. This time to take a stab at changing the impeller. We were hopeful that this would do the trick and get our engine running normal again. Does it twist out or does it just come out? I think out? it pulls out, but no, I think... Oh, there you go. Whoa, there's nothing left on that thing. Oh my gosh, all those got tattered in there. Okay, so this is what it looks like after we pulled it out. Um, I think part of it was sort of self-inflicted how we pulled it out, but at the end of the day, this thing got totally schnockered. <laughs> schnockered, it got totally destroyed. Now to put now now we got to put on the brand new one. You know what the crazy part is is that these things normally last at least 200 hours. At least that's what they say. Well, we've been doing a lot of stuff in with the engine. We've been a lot of engineering. Yeah, but not not 200 hours worth. Are you sure? Yeah. We, okay, we, we, had, we had like 170 again? hours. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Here we go. Ready? Okay, test one of the engine. Here we go. Are you ready, Evelyn? Yes. After we primed the seawater intake hoses and tested out the system, we were finally able to get the cooling water flowing successfully. Trust me when I say that we are proud, but it's hard to tell because someone forgot to turn on the microphone. So after now that we've gotten the whole thing done and <laughs> we've got finally the impeller fixed, it, it solved the whole problem. We just didn't realize it solved the problem. It took us a little while to sort of go through the whole motions on this. I do think it was one of the easier things that we learned with Brad when we did engine maintenance. But I remember, he's like, if just one of those little things is flicked off, you got to replace that. And ours had how many? We only had one left, right? We have No, we have another one. We actually no, have a whole bunch of... we only had one of the little spindles left on the one that was in there, right? Oh, I know. It, it just totally really went broken. off. But now the kids have been like, all right, we're done. Let's, well, let's move on. And they just went off on the paddleboard. We're exhausted here, people. This is, this is like, oh. We're tired. And I think that, that was definitely engine 101, like very basic stuff. And it only took a couple hours to solve the problem. But yeah, I'm ready for a nap. I'm ready for bed. We're ready for guests. We have, we have guests coming over tonight. <laughs> We're tired. We're going to entertain anyway. You're going under. How's the ride, guys? You're actually going under. Well, Marco wants to throw me overboard, so it wasn't. Margo? You guys never get tired, do you? Oh. There you go.
spectacular morning sunrise here in Ibiza and I never thought I would love Ibiza so much which I don't because there's so many boats here <laughs> and this place is, is a madhouse. I was gonna say you loved it because you were complaining about it. I like it now. It's it's like it's like watching <laughs> You like it now that we're leaving. I like it now that we're leaving. I was asleep. This is my favorite hour. Um it's just magical. The only um the only thing now is we gotta check for the engine. So we have a ten hour ride from here in Ibiza to Mallorca, back to where we were a couple of days ago, a week or two ago. Uh, because we got a couple of meetups to do and I'm gonna be ducking in underneath to go check on the, the whole water cooling system uh, I want to check the weak stringer level. I want to check make sure there's no leaks because we opened everything up and closed everything up We did some tests beforehand, but you know when it's under strain is really when you have, you have to test it and Other than that we're gonna enjoy the ride and my gosh the sun's just coming up right now Are we gonna be sailing at all today or is it all motor day? I hope we get to sail a lot. I hope so too. I hope we actually it every day and then we wind up motoring. Welcome to the bed. <laughs> and then you're complaining the whole time that we have no wind. Oh, that's life. <laughs> Check this out. Where you wanna go? I am all about adventure times. And not a drink and I'll go anywhere. The way you smile, like a flash in the universe. all full and it looks good I am I'm not ready to put the bed back together now because I want to get to it in a hurry in case something goes wrong but uh, I, I think this is overall a success for our first ever like putting stuff together and fixing it and all that stuff listen DIY on a boat fixing your own boat is something that you either you walk on a boat because you know engine mechanics and everything else or you walk in as a novice and you have no idea what you're doing and eventually you're stuck in a position where you just have to go ahead and figure it out on your own because you have no choice. In this case, uh, I'm lucky that we had our instructor who walked us through the whole idea of what to do in case of something that went wrong with the boat and we followed it to a T. Um, I cannot highly recommend, I cannot recommend highly more uh, getting an instructor to help you get through your first couple days on a boat and your first couple weeks and so forth and so on because you know the, the little tips and tricks he's going to teach you is going to be invaluable I mean we're here now and because and we didn't pay someone to sort of fix it for us and we didn't panic because we had him score we almost did a full engine service at home I did despite the oil change and the cooling change and we missed like five things <laughs> but that's okay. we dealt with the impeller and the oil Wow, that's windy. I don't think we're gonna get any sleep tonight. Woohoo! No, no, no. This is breakfast. What's last of the yogurt? It's, it's, it makes its own self contained container. It's quite nice. How'd you sleep? Yeah. I think that cat might be a charter. The one that should have worn in the morning? Well, I think if they were. If they were liveaboards and they came in at one in the morning, they wouldn't be out soaking up the sun this early. They'd be like, well, I have tomorrow, I have the next day, I'm gonna sleep in. They got a nice boat, they got a Lagoon 45. Mm -hmm. Not a Lagoon, Leopard 45. I don't like the Leopards. No? We're missing two of the plastic pieces. Yeah, I know, it totally got destroyed. Where do they go? They're down there.